Setting Much Ado About Nothing in the 1940s really was a way of utilizing the, the theme of gender disparity, um, but modernizing it in a world that is more familiar to us as an American audience. Bringing in those, uh, the hints of musicals, the hints of that ho old Hollywood musical is really special. It just puts this, this tone and this color over what is such a familiar story that it, it's, there's an ebullience to this. You automatically are in a great mood because you're doing Shakespeare. And then it's like, oh, by the way, guys, we're doing dancing and it's going to be swing dancing. And you're like, oh, sign me up. It, it was so much fun learning all these dances. I especially love the USO number because it's adorable. Costumes for an actor are so essential. In any show you do, the first time you put that costume on, it catapults your connection with your character. And Virgis was really, um, really came to life when I had the costume, and I, it had to because I'm not a 70 year old man. You know what I mean? So um, <laughs> I love it. Uh, Frank has given me several silhouettes to work with that really allow Beatrice to be the many things that she is. They are heightening what you've been working on and you get to relax and just fall into the period and the show. The play is so universal and you get the magic of the Shakespearean language without having to intellectualize it at all. It's heartwarming and it's lovely and there's music and there's dancing and there's beautiful costumes and there's comedy. <laughs> There's going to be something that's going to make you go, oh, wow. <laughs> what more do you want? It's just really a, a special way for anybody to experience Shakespeare, um, even if it's the only time you ever do.